Hey guys, it's Mr. Lawler here from Perry Fields High School. I'm going to be teaching today about the nature of waves. So go ahead and get ready. I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint here so you should be able to see that now. Okay, so the nature of waves, there's a lot more to waves than you might realize. Sorry, should be the start there. So starting with what are waves? This isn't just water waves. This isn't like the queen waving. This is like waves in physics. It's P12.1. So by the end of this lesson, you should know and describe the two types of waves. You should be able to describe the properties of a wave and to link the frequency and the wavelength to the speed. So you'll know you've done well and succeeded if you can draw and describe both of the two kinds of waves. You know the definitions of our keywords, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, crest, and speed and you'll be able to identify any of those characteristics. Um, to really challenge yourself and stretch, you should be able to link the period of a wave to the frequency. So first up, there's two different kinds of waves. There's a longitudinal wave and a transverse wave. And if you look at these diagrams, hopefully you can see what's going on here. You should be able to see where the waves are a little bit clumped up, like see here, there's, they're more compressed. So that's actually called a compression on a longitudinal wave. So you can see the space between those two compressions, it actually stays the same. So we call that in physics the wavelength. That's the distance between two crests of a wave. That's one of the key characteristics or key properties of a wave is its wavelength. Now, a longitudinal wave, a good example of one of those is the waves that we get that transfer sound. So a longitudinal wave is a mechanical wave and it needs a medium to travel through. So sound can't travel through a vacuum where there's no particles. Here we've got little black dots showing us like different particles. So that could be like the air in your room right now as you're listening to this sound. Okay, so when you get those particles being compressed, those compressions will travel along the same axis as the energy is traveling. So you'll see that the energy travels along our screen here from left to right. Well, the particles themselves are actually moving from left to right. And what we've got in this animation is we've got little red dots here. Yeah, you'll see the particle vibrates or from left to right and back and forth in that same direction. And it's, a, it's along this same axis as the energy itself is moving. So a wave is actually something that transfers energy without the particles needing to be transferred themselves. So you'll notice the red dots are not moving permanently that way. They're, they're moving, but they're moving back to where they were. So that's why we would say this is a wave, okay? If the particle, the little red dot was just moving, then that wouldn't be a wave. It's moving, coming back, moving again, coming back. So it's moving along the same axis, which is what makes this a longitudinal wave. Okay, now contrast that with this here. You'll notice we've got the same little red dots there, there, yeah? So this way, the wave is moving still from left to right. So we would say the energy transfer is going from left to right. It's along this kind of X axis. So as it moves along here, the particles are not moving along that same axis. On my axis here, I've got them moving on a Y axis. So the particles are vibrating up and down. Well, that's not along the same axis. That's opposite to the axis, that's perpendicular. So a transverse wave, the key characteristic to a transverse wave is that the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of the energy travel. So we've still got the wavelength there, that's the distance between two crests. But as it vibrates up and down, each particle isn't moving permanently, it's not moving from left to right, it's vibrating up and down but it's staying in place. So the vibrations are perpendicular. The wave here, the energy is traveling on the x-axis, the particles are vibrating on the y-axis. On the longitudinal wave, they are vibrating on the x-axis and the energy is traveling along that same x-axis, okay? Now good examples of a transverse wave is anything in the electromagnetic spectrum or the EM spectrum. So that's everything from radio waves all the way up to gamma rays. So visible light falls in this spectrum. Um, there's tons of stuff in, in there. Um, X-rays are on there. All these things basically have the same properties. Um, they just have a different wavelength. Okay, so here's our two types of waves. Excuse me. 
So the key components of the wave, you need to know what the particles are. You need to know the wavelengths. Here, this would be our transverse wave at the bottom. This is our longitudinal wave at the top. So the wavelength is still there. On a longitudinal wave, you can easily measure the wavelengths by the length between two compressions. So see where the particles are more bunched up there, they're compressed, that's called a compression. In between the two compressions, that's called a rarefaction. I like to remember that like the particles are a bit more rare in that section, so it's a rarefaction. So compressions and, and rarefactions there. So that's the compression, that's the next compression. If you look at the length between those two, that's its wavelengths, okay? Now I've labeled here the energy moving along the x-axis, the particles also vibrating along that x-axis, okay? Be careful you don't say things like moving left to right because you need to indicate that it's parallel to the axis, uh, to the direction of the energy transfer here, okay? So this one at the top there, that's a longitudinal wave. Obviously, I've got that with a slinky spring. You can do this at home if you've got a slinky. You can get somebody to hold one end and you hold the other end. And if you just squash it, like just... Um, I should move back and forth really quickly, you'll see that energy transfer along. You can do the same with the transverse wave um, with a slinky. You can use the same thing rather. But you can actually do that with just a string. If you get somebody to hold that, you can just wiggle it up and down. And you'll see um, that you, you'll get different crests, okay? And the wavelength will be that distance there. Now on my diagram here, I've actually measured the wavelength between the two bottom sections, okay? So that's, that's equal, that's the same thing. It would be exactly the same like wavelength from here to here as from here to here. Okay, so that's the same thing. So yeah, just point out that key point again for the transverse wave, this is B, oops, sorry. The transverse wave, the energy is moving along that x-axis, the particles are vibrating perpendicular to the energy transfer. Okay. What I want you to do now in your own notes, if you want to do this on a, a Word document or any other document online, you can do that, but you can do this in your notes as well. I want you to follow these steps here, one through four. Make sure you've drawn out both of the waves, okay? Show the direction of the movement of energy. I gave you that on the last slide, okay? Show and describe the direction of the movement of the particles. I gave you that on the last slide as well and show a compression and rarefaction on the longitudinal wave. Now go ahead and pause this video here, okay? Pause it now and give yourself four or five minutes to do that, okay? Okay, so check your answer now, self-assess, okay? So at the top here, just put S, A, Hopefully your handwriting is a little bit neater than that. Okay. And um, yeah. Where is this here? Okay. I lost it. Okay, sorry about that. So just self-assess your work there. Make sure you've got the energy, particles, rarefaction. Okay, give yourself one mark for the names, one mark for the energy transfer, one mark for labeling compression and rarefaction, and one mark if you labeled those particles there, then the direction of their travel. Okay, if you've described that in words, the keyword we're looking for here is parallel. The keyword we're looking for here is perpendicular, okay? Now, on to the wave properties. I'm going to ask you to pause again in a second. Uh, generally, we show the wave properties on a transverse wave. It's a little bit less complicated to draw those there. So if you draw that out in your notes now, label the wavelength, label the amplitude, label the crest, which is also called the peak. So that there. That's peak, that is, okay? That's trough, that's the bottom of the wave. Okay, so that's the trough, sorry. 
Yeah, so what do all these things mean? Well, the wavelength is the distance between two identical points on a wave. As I said before, it's easiest to measure between the two peaks or between the two crests. The crest is the highest point above the center line. The amplitude is the distance between the center line and the crest. And the trough is the, the opposite of the crest, basically. It's the furthest point below the center line. The frequency is the number of waves per second. So if you haven't had time to copy all that down, just go ahead and pause this now and get that. Okay. Now use what you've got there. Use what you've drawn and try to match all those up. Go ahead and do that now. I'll give you a minute to pause the video and go ahead and do that. Okay, let's look at our answers. Crest is the highest point. Amplitude is the distance from the center up to the crest. The frequency is the waves per second. The wavelength is the distance between two identical points on the wave. The period, now this is where we link it, that was that kind of extension thing. The period is the time taken for one wave. So that's time per wave. If you compare that to the frequency, that's waves per second. So those two things are a little bit like opposites. Or in maths, they would say that's the inverse. So the period is actually equal to the number one divided by the frequency. Okay, so that's that link between the period and the frequency. If you had the frequency, you could do one divided by frequency, that would tell you the period. So for example, if the frequency was two hertz, and the question said, what is the period of this wave? In other words, what's the time taken for one wave? Then what you would do is you would say the period equals one divided by two hertz. That's one divided by two. That's a half, which is 0 0.5. So the period is 0 0.5 seconds. So the time taken for one wave is half a second. Yeah, and you could do the same thing if you, if you were given the period and they said the period is half a second, you would do one divided by 0 0.5, you'd get two hertz, okay? Now, you may get some graphs like these. You can use the diagram that you've drawn in your notes. You can use your definitions to help you. I'm gonna actually talk you through the, this first one here because these diagrams can be a bit tricky at first. So what you've got here is you've got a label on your x-axis and it tells you what the value is or what the scale is. So this is saying one second and we can see the wave form, the shape of the wave that was created in that one second. We also get some units here, 50, 100. It doesn't tell us what the units are. It's arbitrary units, okay? So that just means you don't have to worry about what the units are, okay? Now to know the amplitude, we need to know the distance from the center line up to the peak. So the amplitude, the center line is always zero, okay? So it's from zero to 100, so the amplitude is 100. Again, we don't have any units here because they haven't given us that on the graph. For the frequency, we'll see the units in a second. So we need to calculate the frequency. In one second, we've got one, that's one complete wave. Two, three, four complete waves. Okay, so that's four waves in one second. So that would be equal to four hertz. Hertz is the units of frequency. So what I've done there, that's one wave, wave goes up, all the way down and back up to the middle. Be careful you don't stop it here, okay? That's not eight waves, that's one complete wave. It has to go up, back down, and then back up to that center line. So that would be the end of the first wave there, okay? So have a go at this one now. We've got different scale on the y-axis, we've got a different time passed. What would the amplitude and frequency be? I'll give you a second to pause there. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four waves again, but this time in two seconds, and this time our scale goes up to 250. So easily the amplitude is 250, and the frequency is four waves in two seconds, it's two hertz. Okay, hopefully you got that one right. Right, here's an exam question for you. For three marks, you can include label diagrams. Give yourself at least three minutes to do this. Okay, read it carefully, answer the question, make sure you're explaining the difference. Think about the keywords that I was using 
when I was describing the difference between those two. I'll give you a, a second to pause this right now. Okay, did you do it? Did you get stuck? All right, self-assess your work. Now here's what the mark scheme says. These are the key words. Now I mentioned this word that's pronounced oscillation. Okay, but you can also have the mark if you said vibration. If you said a movement, you're not getting the mark there. That's insufficient. Okay, so you need to be saying the vibrations of the wave. And then these are the two marking points where you're going to get your second and third marks. Okay, so you would say something like the vibrations of the particles in a transverse wave are perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. The underline here means you only get the mark if you said energy transfer, okay? So answers given in terms of direction of wave travel and not energy transfer, you can get one mark for both of those points. That just means if you didn't say energy either time, but you said perpendicular and you said parallel and you were sort of comparing the vibrations, you can get a total of two marks there. You get one mark for that, one mark for saying the vibrations, okay? <laughs> you can also get those marks for labeling that carefully. So the key here is for a transverse wave, the vibrations are perpendicular to the energy transfer. For a longitudinal wave, the vibrations are parallel to the energy transfer. I hope that makes sense. I will, actually, I'll just pull up that other slide for a sec and show you that. Okay, just remember that. Okay, so this is parallel for a longitudinal wave. The particles are vibrating parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So they're both along that x-axis. For a transverse wave, it's perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. Well, that's clear. Right then, that's it. I hope that you have drawn and described both kinds of waves. You know the definitions of our keywords, and you can identify those characteristics.